Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio, and we're going to continue our discussion on the new features of Final Cut Pro 10.0.6. And uh, tonight, or today, we're just, we've been flying all over the place, I don't even know what time it is, but we're switching roles. In the last episode, I talked about audio component editing in the context of cutting a dialogue scene, but now we're going to look at audio, componenting, audio component editing with a multicam uh, scenario. In and multi-cam. this is, uh, this is yeah. where uh, this feature really shines. So It is. It really makes... Uh, multicam, which is already fantastic and easy uh, and fluid in Final Cut Pro 10, and it really adds uh, the piece that caps it, that, that makes it. You're able to do anything now, pretty much. Well, and with, I want to point out, point out something I, I mentioned in an article I wrote from Ken Stone is like Apple doesn't just put in a fe- put back a feature; they actually improve it, they rethink it, they reimagine it, yeah. they make it yeah. better. And in my opinion, this is absolutely the best multicam editor yeah. in the industry right now, and they made it better with this new feature. Well, it just it's a way of editing, and maybe I should show it, but it, of it, you don't run into any risks of getting things out of sync, yes. and it's just easy yeah. and works. So um, I'm going to assume you know basic multicam editing for doing this. I'm not going to get into the pre-existing 10.0.5 and earlier features. So here I have a multicam clip in the event browser that was built built out of, sorry, let me come up and zoom up here, built out of all these clips. We have five camera angles, one camera angle, the camera's turned on and off. We have reference audio, which was the audio that the band lipped sank to, yep. lip synced to, yep. uh, some graphics, and all these are combined into one multicam clip. So um, in order to view that clip, we want to open up what's called the angle viewer. And that's not new, but where it lives is a little bit different. If I go to the window menu, instead of just going to it directly, we go to this viewer display uh, pop-up and then choose show angles or the same keyboard shortcut that, uh, that you may be used to, Shift-Command-7. So here it is. This is our angle viewer. We can see all the angles of the multicam clip. And I happen to name the angles to make it obvious. Uh, each of them do, the singer, the guitar, the bass, drums. We can't see the drums right now because uh, the camera was turned off and on. So if I, if I, there we go, I'll move to a point where we can actually see the drums. There we go. Uh, a floating camera and the reference audio, the audio they sang along to, and some graphics. So you can choose to switch between these. Now, normally when you set up a multicam edit, you say, well, in this case, as I cut to the different video angles... Use this audio angle. I want the same audio angle to stay all the time. I don't yeah. want it to change. I so I can switch to audio-only switching, switch to the audio angle, and then I'm going to switch to... Video-only switching. Video-only switching. So now when I cut the piece, I can go to each video angle and keep that audio, keep the yeah. reference audio. So nothing new there. Um, but here's what is new, and this is just... Let me, let me just show you instead of uh, describing it because it's really cool. So I'm going to go to the inspector, okay? You can do this in the event viewer, in the, in the angle viewer, but it's better to go to the inspector. If I open the inspector, we can see all of these different angles. Uh, basically, these are the audio angles, the, right. audio, the, from, the audio from each camera, right. okay? Um, and in fact, if the, if the audio has multiple sources, you'd see each source for each camera if you open these up. But in this case, each camera had a single... Uh, channel basically, or a single mic source, and only the only one that's enabled is the reference, the lip sync, the lip sync, that yeah, what they're lip syncing to. But let's say, for example, I also want to include the mic for the singer because she was actually singing and not just lip syncing, and I want to include her voice right, in the mix. Right, you want to be able to mix it. In. Yeah, yeah. All I have to do is click this checkbox to include her. Now let me back out so you can see when I click that. Uh, checkbox in the inspector, we get the same green outline around this angle. Which is Final Cut telling you whenever you cut to this, it, it ple- uh, whenever you do a cut, include this angle, audio right. angle. Right. So now if I switch, I'm just switching right now, I haven't actually put this in a project, but as I switch video angles, we're keeping both of those audio angles. So you can have as, I, I'm calling them audio angles, but it's kind of like audio from each angle. Right. So you can have as many different audio sources as part of your multicam clip as you want. So if I edit this, I'm just hitting E to do an append edit and drop it in the timeline, and it's coming on with one one angle, which is the bass player. Let's actually start it with the, the singer. Um, and I'm not going to actually, normally you would play and cut, but I'm just going to go through and make a couple quick cuts like this, one at a time, just so we have a couple cuts. Um, 
because what I want to show you is once you've gone through and created your multicam edits, and now we start on the whole group and we cut to the guitarist oh, yeah, and we yeah, cut yeah. to the bass, bass player and we cut to uh, bass player again right there. But here's the thing that's so cool about this. If I go down to this shot of the uh, guitarist, I'm going to option double click or control click and choose expand audio components, which you talked about last week. And there are our two uh, channels. separate channels, right? One for the singer and one for the uh, the reference audio. For this particular clip, I can make it different. So for this one, if I want to bring in some of the guitar mic, I can go ahead and turn on in the inspector here the guitar, and then we see it's added right here. Right. So on a clip by clip basis, we can enable each of these in the inspector. Or if you want it there but just not hear it, you can hit the V key and disable it by keeping it uh, available. And, and you can mix the volume uh, of each channel um, using yep. the volume. You line. can use the volumes. You can set ranges in here and just you know bring part of it up and down. You can disable part of it. You can add effects on a channel by channel basis. So you basically have access to um, each individual audio channel. Audio channel in a multicam shoot on a clip by clip, clip by clip basis, say it's, that 10 yeah. times fast, and uh, you're never worried about sync at all. You can, in fact, even trim these, uh, you know. Although, why would you want to do that? Although, in generally, in a multicam shoot, you're not going to want to do that, but you, you could if you were so inclined, if you actually ended up making a cut in your in your multicam clip. So, that's just one example of a multicam, multicam clip kind of situation. Now, now, can I actually, let's say all those clips, and I want to go clip by clip, I wanted to add, let's say, you added the uh, guitar. I wanted to add the guitar to all of all them. All of them, yeah. Once. So, what I can do is I can just select them all. This is great. I'm actually really glad you brought that up. Uh, I select them all now. In the inspector, it says four selected clips. Mm -hmm. And for four selected clips, I can now turn on uh, any channel I want, and it will turn that on for all of them. So at once. You, wow, so if you option double click to, on any of those, you'll show the guitar. Wow. Yeah, so option double click, and now yep. we've got all three of those that's, audio channels on for all of amazing. them. That's amazing. So very, very convenient. Now, um, one other little example I want to show you is I've got another multicam shoot, and this is a little talk we did about the GoPro Hero camera. Right. It was a three camera shoot, uh, a two shot of the both of us, a, uh, a camera on me, and a camera on you, right? And if I go look at the original event, I'll select the multicam clip. And in this case, each camera had multiple mics um, feeding them. Right. So I've got this EX1, I've got this EX3, and you see I've got some things turned off here. Um, and I've labeled them. So I've got Steve's lav, I've got the camera mic for the EX3, I've got Mark's lav and the camera mic for the EX1. And then there was an FS700 that had a shotgun, shotgun mic. mic. I'm going to turn that off. We don't even, we don't really need that at all here. So I can, before doing the edit, I can choose what, what mics to include. Um, or after doing the edit, I can choose exactly. It's, I mean, it's the ultimate in flexibility to be able to mix and match these mic sources without it worrying about a patch panel or anything and like that. What's really nice about that is like a lot of audio and stuff is, you know, comes off of archives and whatnot, and you want to hand it off to an editor. And so the editor is not sure what channels to use in their edit. You can then pre-disable uh, or turn off the channels, and so the editor n knows these are the channels I'm supposed to right, work with. Right, because you can change it in the event and just hand off the event, and it, they're ready to go and start editing. Here, if I, if I expand this last part, uh, you can see I've already fixed this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unfix it. <laughs> um, I'm going to select this and, and fix there it there. Go. So let's listen to this part right here when we have a, a line here. Diving. You actually take a dive. You, you can actually take a diving. So I, I touched my mic, yes. and I did it on purpose there just to demonstrate the issue, although I, I tend to do it by accident as well, as, so, as you may yeah. see in the show. So your, your channel mic doesn't it needs to right. be repaired or removed. Right. So I've got this thing where I'm touching the mic, and it's ruining uh, my audio. So, But what I can do is just take my audio here, uh, right where I start to speak. After you're done speaking, before I start to speak, I'm going to set a range where I start to speak, and I'll just disable that. I could also trim it, but I'll just stay, disable it. And then, if we play it, at this point... Down to 100 and, what is it, 170 feet. So you can take that camera and you can put it right down uh, diving. You have to take it diving. Okay, so we're now hearing the audio from, from your mic. mic. Right. Um, so we don't hear the brushing sound at all. But the level's but it, too low. The level's too low, but that's, that's an easy fix. I'll just set a, the same range for your mic, and I'll bring that up. And if I play it now... 
170 feet. So you can take that camera and you can put it right down uh, diving. You can actually take it diving. Mm -hmm. Okay? Fixed. So the quick and easy fix. And you can apply effects on a channel, cha channel by channel basis. So think of it this way. In any multicam shoot situation where you've got multiple mics into multiple cameras, for any shot, you can choose any, any audio, audio source, source, any wow. mic from any camera, and mix them together the way you want. So you might want some ambient from one mic for overall sound, but then you still want the lav and you want to change the mix. You've got full you creative then, you, control. You can then easily mix between a lav and a, and a shotgun mic. And exactly. It's just, oh my gosh, so much simpler. And it's cleaner, and then when you're done, you can collapse it all and right. hide so all the stuff you don't want to see. I can clap this, and then, th this, then it looks uh, very clean when you're done. And it can move on to color correction or oh, whatever else I'm doing. It's fantastic. So. If someone wants to learn this particular feature and more about the new features, they can buy? Uh, RippleTraining.com, the 10.0.6 in-depth right. training. It's and there's actually media. You can actually download this media and actually do this exercise. Yeah, if, you're, if you really want to look really at our ugly mugs. <laughs> 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 no. But it's a good sample of, right. of kind of, of kind of ha how it works. Um, you've, got, you've got it there. So, or if you're, if you're new to Final Cut Pro 10, you probably want to do the Apple Pro, Apple Pro Video Series training that will start you at the beginning yeah. and get you used to it. So there you have it, another excellent episode on audio component editing, which is a huge tentpole feature in the new Final Cut 10.06. We want to thank you for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio.